Hi, I'm Dave from Two Stroke Performance and welcome to another TSP video. Today I'm going to talk about the adjustment that's available on the KTM and Husky uh, 250 and 300 TPL throttle bodies. Um, there is a lot of discussion around these throttle bodies about what you can and can't adjust and what the correct methods are to, to get the necessary adjustment. Uh, and there's a lot of confusion. So I wanted to clarify what the different circuits on this throttle body are for. Uh, first of all, let's just have a quick look at the two main uh, areas that we can adjust. So the first adjustment that most people are familiar with is this large flat blade screw here. People often refer to this as an idle adjustment or an idle screw, but that's incorrect. This is actually an air bypass screw and it's not to be used for idle adjustment. The second adjustment, which you can just see um, down in here, is the uh, idle screw, which, which limits or sets the, the uh, idle speed of the engine by limiting how, how far the butterfly can close. This screw here is the one that needs to be adjusted in order to get a, a, a slow and steady idle on the TPIs and not the air screw here. So I've drawn on the board here uh, a, a brief, or I guess a, a, a simple summary of what those two circuits do. So as I said, the large flat blade is the air bypass screw, and the small screw that sets the butterfly movement uh, is the idle screw. So if you can see here, this is our main passage through the throttle body, which is uh, where the air travels straight in through here. Uh, in red, we have our butterfly, which you'll see uh, there which is closed at the moment. I can open and close it here. Um, this green screw uh, is, is uh, meant to represent the air bypass screw and you can see that there's a passage that comes up, bypasses the butterfly and then comes in behind the butterfly. So the normal path of airflow is in this direction and into the engine here. So the air bypass allows air to come up through here and essentially bypass the butterfly. So when, uh, from the factory, this large flat blade screw here will be set uh, to a certain number. Usually for the 18 and 19 models, it's set around one and a half to two turns open. So that is you, you, you wind it in clockwise first until it gently closes and then count how many turns back open uh, it is. So they're normally set one, one and a half to two turns open. On the 2020 models, they seem to be around three and a half to four turns open. So they're using a, a bigger uh, setting on the, on the 2020 models. Um, secondly, the idle screw here, which I've just represented with this orange thing, um, that basically limits how, how far the, the um, butterfly can close. So obviously if we screw this in further, it will keep the butterfly open a little bit more. And if we back it out, it'll allow the butterfly to close uh, even further. Uh, so what we often find with the TPIs is that they will run better and have slightly better throttle response when we close this air screw a little bit further than the factory setting. Not on every bike, but on a, on a um, you know, percentage of bikes out there, uh, they will run better when this air screw is closed a little bit further. Uh, but what often happens then is when you close the air screw further, um, there is then not quite enough airflow. So if we were to close this further, shut off some of that airflow through here, there's then not enough air f uh, airflow at idle to keep a, a, um, a decent idle speed, so the engine will, will want to stall uh, more often. So when we supply our uh, TPI power kits, uh, when we reflash the ECU and supply the head, one thing that, that we always throw in is one of these bolts and a spring, which hopefully you can see here. The purpose of this is um, so that you can uh, install this bolt and spring and actually be able to control the idle speed by adjusting the idle screw rather than um, uh, being limited by whatever idle speed you're left with after adjusting the air bypass. <clears throat> so the main point that you need to take from this video or this section of this video is that the air bypass is not an, not to be used as an idle adjustment. Uh, it's an air bypass, as the name suggests. Um, it's to be used, uh, or, or uh, you tune the air bypass to achieve the best uh, throttle response and the best part throttle running. Uh, if you open this air bypass all the way or open it further, 
uh, it will have an impact all the way through the rev range, uh, right up to wide open throttle. But in terms of, of the percentage impact it has, it has a, the biggest percentage impact when the butterfly is relatively closed or at low throttle. So you need to put some time and effort with most TPI bikes into playing around with the air bypass and finding the setting that gives you the best throttle response uh, and doesn't have the bike feeling too rich or too lean. Once you've adjusted that air bypass, uh, if and only if you end up with an idle speed then that's too high or too low, as a second stage you would then go and fit um, the idle bolt and spring and then for step two you would uh, readjust that idle speed or, or, or change that idle speed to be what you want. So adjust the air bypass first to get good running at part throttle and then if necessary adjust your idle speed. So. Following up from that, I'll give you a real world example um, that happened just very recently with a customer who had fitted one of our TPI uh, power kits. Um, they uh, emailed me to say that the bike ran great, but what they noticed uh, or what they felt is that at part throttle, the bike was perhaps a little bit too lean. Uh, and after doing a long, steady hill climb, when they got to the top of the hill, there was a slight hanging idle, which is when the idle stays higher than normal for several seconds before settling down. Now, a hanging idle is a, is a sure sign that the bike is a little bit too lean. So in that instance, the customer, um, their air screw was set at two turns open. They closed it by one turn. So it ended up at one turn open. Uh, and that made the bike run significantly better everywhere. But as a result of that, their idle speed dropped too low. And so they emailed me to say, my, you know, the bike is running great, but now my idle speed is too low. What do I do? So obviously in that example, as stage two, they would then fit uh, this bolt and spring, leave the air screw set at one turn, if that gives the best running at part throttle, fit the bolt and spring, just to lift the idle speed back up a little bit. Uh, I guess the opposite of that example would be um, if someone, uh, either with a stock bike or one of our power kits fitted, if they felt that the bike was too boggy at part throttle uh, and uh, possibly always wanted to stall out and maybe felt a bit unresponsive at, at low throttle, you could open the air screw further uh, to allow a bit more air in and to lean the mixtures out slightly at part throttle. If that then resulted in a higher idle speed, which it may do, then you could fit the, the bolt and spring and close the, the butterfly further to drop the idle speed down, but leave the air screw more open to improve the mixtures at part throttle. So hopefully you get the idea that you can use a combination of the air bypass screw adjustment and then as a second step, the idle bolt uh, installation to get your TPI running uh, as, as good as possible. Um, I do suggest to everyone to put a little bit of time into experimenting with uh, the air bypass setting, even if your bike it seems to be running perfectly well. Um, the simplest place to start is to close it a little bit uh, from wherever you're set now. Obviously closing it will only make the bike richer, which um, can only be safer. Uh, if, if it makes a small improvement, that's great. If there's no difference, go back to your original setting. Maybe try half a turn more open. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment, but always take down notes so that you know where you're starting from. So you can always go back to that initial baseline setting. So the first thing you need to do is count how many turns it takes to close your, your air bypass screw, and that will always be your baseline. So feel free to experiment with that. Um, I would say we've sold uh, hundreds now of the TPI power kits um, and uh, generally they run very, very well. Um, but there are a small percentage of bikes, I'd say maybe 10 to 20% where people do need to install these idle bolts and springs. Um, and the only complaints that, or issues that we've ever had in terms of the running of the bikes after the um, uh, ECU and head have been installed have all been resolved just by some fairly simple adjustment uh, of this air, air bypass and then fitting of the idle screws. So if you have fitted one of our uh, power kits and you think that the bike isn't quite doing something right, especially at part throttle or at idle, then have an experiment with the air bypass and fit the idle uh, uh, bolt screw. Uh, and I dare say that you'll, you'll find a setting that, that really you know, helps the bike to come alive. So the next part of this video is uh, I'm going to show you the, uh, the process of installing uh, this bolt and spring. So we'll come over to the bench and I'll show you that process now. 
So the process of installing this bolt and spring is quite simple. Hopefully you can see here on the video clearly the grub screw, which is holding the um, throttle body open. So when I open and close it, it sits down on the grub screw and that sets um, or limits the, the amount of travel that the, butterfly, that the butterfly can close and therefore it sets the idle speed of the bike. Um, you may be able to see in here, hopefully, there's some red Loctite. So this grub screw is Loctited in place. Um, uh, whatever you do, don't try and just unscrew it uh, because the Loctite is very, very firm and there's a big chance that you will damage the grub screw and then it becomes a much, much bigger job. What you need to do is you need to heat this whole area to break down the Loctite and then once the, the Loctite is broken down, then it's quite simple to unscrew it. Now, before, um, before doing that, I've, I have already taken a measurement here of the gap uh, between the butterfly and this um, aluminium part. It's 4.8 millimetres on this particular throttle body. So that uh, is my baseline. So once I install the, the bolt and spring, I will screw it in and start with that same gap of 4.8 millimetres. So I know that I'll be starting with the same idle speed. And then once it's on the bike, I can adjust, uh, adjust from there. So if you see here, uh, uh, um, we're going to, next we're going to heat up this part, but you'll see there's a plastic part here which holds the cables. Obviously we don't want to get heat into that because it will damage. Um, so the sensible thing to do is to heat from the back side here, which will heat up the aluminium around the Loctite and break it down. So I'll mount the throttle body in the vise and we'll gently start heating from this back side. Uh, another thing to note, um, this is a 2.5 millimetre Allen key. I've cut the end off so that it's nice and square. Um, the, this particular one normally has a ball end on it, which I don't like using because they can strip out more easily. So the, yeah, this particular one is a 2.5 millimeter Allen key, fits in there nicely. Make sure you remove any dirt or grit that might be in here, because uh, that can strip out the grub screw. Uh, and once everything's clean, then you're ready to heat up the throttle body. So I'm using a, a fairly standard blowtorch now. Um, uh, to heat up the throttle body. I've got it mounted in the vise. I'm going to heat from the underside, so I'm going to come at it underneath so that the flame doesn't touch this plastic part. And I'm just going to gently heat it and keep watching the Loctite from above until I see it start to break down and go soft. So fairly low flame, keep it moving around. It can take a little while to get enough heat. Being aluminium, it does transfer heat fairly effectively, so this Localised heat here will be spreading right through the throttle body fairly quickly. So it can take some time to heat up to the appropriate temperature. Now if you look very carefully, you, you, you won't be able to see this in the video, but if you look carefully at the Loctite, it's actually starting to bubble very, very slightly. Um, now that tells me that it's starting to break down. Uh, sometimes you get just a tiny, tiny little bit of smoke uh, coming out of it. Um, and they're the sort of signs you need to look for to let you know that, that the aluminium around it is hot enough. Now I think we're getting right now. I'm going to put the blowtorch down and take my Allen key. It goes in through this hole at the bottom and I'm going to very gently start to turn it. I'm not applying much pressure. No, nope, it doesn't want to come just yet. You don't want to force it. So I'll keep heating it. The last thing you want to do is force it and round off the inside of the grub screw because then you won't be able to remove it easily. Okay, I'll try that again. Yep, here we go. Straight away it started to turn, but it's still reasonably tight. So I'm going to keep heating it. So it's definitely a case of slow and steady wins the race. Try it again. Yeah, much, much easier now. Now it's coming out very easily. So that's the way to do it, just slowly and carefully. Watch out, because the grub screw is going to be extremely hot, as is the throttle body.
and if I'm careful, I should be able to pull it all the way out. So that's the grub screw there. Now I'll just blow this out with um, some air just to clear away the Loctite. And now straight away we can take our, our bolt and spring, install it straight through the hole on the, in the bottom here. And just by hand, you can start to thread it in. Just for those who are interested, this bolt is it's just a, a, a plain M5 metric thread bolt. Uh, this one's 50 millimeters long. So you see it's in there now. It's touching the throttle body. I can actually open the throttle body a small amount. I'll back it off a bit. And I'll grab my vernier and set this gap to 4.8 millimeters. There you go, it's a little bit over 4.8. I'm just gonna do this by eye. Yeah, it's about right, it's close enough. So, that's now the bolt and spring in place. Uh, the reason for the spring, obviously, it, it, it puts a bit of load on the bolt um, and pulls the thread tight so that when the bike is running, this won't turn by itself. Obviously, I haven't applied any new Loctite onto the bolt because we do want to be able to adjust it. I'm going to let this cool now and then go on to the final stage, which I'll show you in just a second. So now this, um, when you reinstall uh, the throttle body uh, and you put the two cables in here, onto this assembly. This black cover goes back on and the bolt, now that we have a bolt sticking out, uh, it interferes with this plastic part here. So the last stage is to um, notch out uh, this cover in a U shape so that when you fit it back on, uh, it slides around the bolt and spring quite easily. So I'm gonna drill a hole in it first, just roughly um, in the right position by hand. So we'll start with a hole and then I'm just going to take some cutters and slice straight down. And I'll just get a file and clean this up a little bit in a moment. But hopefully straight away you can see that it now slots back on with the bolt uh, sticking out the bottom so that when this throttle body is reassembled on the bike you can get an allen key or even your fingers into this to adjust the idle. So hopefully uh, that process of installing the idle bolt and screw and the explanation of the, of the, the circuits in the throttle body made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email them through to admin at twostrokeperformance.com.au. Uh, this throttle body is now ready to reinstall it on the bike. Um, I haven't explained the process of removing and reinstalling the throttle body. Uh, you can either look it up in your user manual or there's plenty of videos on YouTube. It, it only takes five to ten minutes or so. Um, uh, definitely, as I said, feel free to experiment with this air bypass screw. Install the throttle body, either the one that we supply um, or there's other ones uh, on the market that you can source. Uh, because in most cases, whether it's a stock TPI or a bike that's been modified with our power kit, uh, there are normally some small uh, gains to be had by, by getting the mix just right. Thank you for watching.